Hi everyone, this is Brandon. Let's take a quick trip to Alexandria, Minnesota to visit the Viking Plaza. I mean the Viking Plaza Mall. What is this? A rap? Raper rapper? Oh, hmm, that's an odd name for an eatery and ale. I'm just fascinated by this lamp up here, so I came back and filmed it a few times. Ooh, hidden treasures. Wonder what hidden treasure we have here. <gasps> oh, hey, Kevin Costner. Welcome. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Brandon. Please join me on my second tour of Viking Plaza in Alexandria, Minnesota. Although before we enter the mall, I wanted to capture footage of the drought we've been having this summer. As you saw in the earlier footage, I already released a tour of the mall on my channel. In fact, it was the first video on my channel. I think Viking Plaza deserves a 4K update, and I wanted to share its history. Alexandria, Minnesota is 120 miles northwest of Minneapolis. So why did I choose a mall so far away from the Twin Cities as my first video? Shouldn't I have practiced on something closer? Back in 2020, I was ignorant of Minnesota malls. I did not know the condition of any of them outside of the Twin Cities and the three I visited in southern Minnesota. I learned about Viking Plaza from watching the news, and I assumed if it was in the news, it was doomed. I was vacationing about 15 miles south of the mall and decided someone had to film the mall. I made two trips that week because I was getting used to my spy glasses and mostly filmed up at the ceiling. I edited my first video with free software that lacked color correction options and used a cheap headset for my narration. Even though I made six laps around the mall, I still missed some things that I will show you in this video. Viking Plaza opened in 1971 and was renovated in 1978 and again in 2010. I cannot determine all of the original anchors, but I have learned that some early anchors included White Mart, Super Value, and JC Pennies. Herbergers moved into the mall in 1977 after relocating from downtown. Today, the layout of the former Herbergers is oddly shaped as it expanded into the White Mart after its departure in 1993. The Thrifty White Pharmacy remained until the mid-2000s. The Super Value became Pete's County Market before leaving. After the grocery store's departure, a hallway was built into the former location, now giving the mall three northern hallways. This is the hallway you see in the footage presently. You can see the strange layout of Herbergers in this map. In 1983, a serious incident occurred at Viking Plaza. A man had been loitering around the mall and was asked to leave twice by security. At 7 p.m., the man drove his car through the doors of the shopping center, continuing until he crashed into the White Mart. By the time police arrived, they found the man had kept his foot on the accelerator so long that one of the tires wore a hole in the tile floor the man then got out and attacked a security guard. Five people had to go to the hospital. Luckily, there were no deaths. Let's take a break from history to discuss something positive. During my visit in 2020, people were building a platform right outside of D. Michael B's. Were they building a stage? No, too small. A few months later, Viking Plaza made the news again, but for a feel-good story, a man by the name of Jeff Frosty pulled his grandfather's miniature western town out of storage 
put a lot of work into restoring it and set it up in the mall for everyone to enjoy. Oh, oh man, just look at this. Wow. I will share a link to an interview with Jeff Frosty in the description below. Let's now return to the mall's history. Until 2009, a row of trees blocked the view of the mall from passersby to the east. That year, Lexington Realty International bought the property and decided it wasn't a great idea to have the mall hidden. So they tore down the trees and added the entrance that we saw at the beginning of the video. In 2011, Dunham Sports moved into the mall, removing the southern hallway and forcing many small tenants to relocate, including Hallmark, Pet Center, and the Alexandria Hearing Center. Joanne Fabrics moved into a bigger space that housed Thrifty White Pharmacy and remains there to this day. Interesting, around the same time, the Hutchinson Mall also removed a hallway for Dunham's, Probably not a coincidence since these two malls are owned by Lexington Realty International. Oh look at this, all of these photographs are of tenants, current and former. I wonder what's going on behind the black plastic. Is something moving into the Herbergers? I did not find anything in the news. Viking Plaza continued doing well until 2018 when Herbergers and JC Penney's announced closures. The mall also lost Route 21 and Book World. On February 25, 2020, a large fire broke out in downtown Alexandria, destroying several stores. Viking Plaza offered free rent to the businesses. Two accepted the offer, Rappers Eatery and Ale and Hidden Treasures. Rappers has since left the mall and is now a catering company. Hidden Treasures is still in the former Glenware location, but with a more permanent sign. As you heard in my original footage, I was puzzled by the pronunciation of Rappers. While combing through news footage, I noticed that local Alexandria news stations mentioned Rappers by name well, Twin Cities footage just mentioned that several businesses were destroyed by the fire. Less than a month later, COVID hit. During my first visit, the mall seemed really bare as all of the furniture was put into storage and the kids' play area was taped off. Viking Plaza lost a couple of tenants in January 2021. Christopher and Banks left due to corporate bankruptcy and the Brass Lantern Restaurant closed after 40 years of business. Dang, I never did get to try their food. Thank you for joining me on my second tour of Viking Plaza. I wouldn't really recommend watching my original video, but it's out there if you are curious. Oh, I forgot to get something. I, I gotta go back into the mall. Oh, okay, this next story is completely true. I mentioned the Kevin Costner display to my friends last year, but they did not want to go to the mall.
I didn't want to buy Kevin alone, as I was worried I'd smash him up while loading him into my car. Over the months, the owners of Hidden Treasures had moved Kevin to the back of the store, but the same day we went to buy him, the owners had moved him to the front again in hopes of getting rid of the large display that took up a lot of space. It was worth the wait, as the price had dropped significantly. All right, time to take Kevin home. Just a little more outdoor footage, including the Herberger's exteriors that I forgot to film last year. Did someone steal the Herberger's rose, or did they take it with permission for an historical society? Thanks again for joining me. In the next year, I will have repeats of early malls for my channel, as I refilm them with better skill. I've also become more comfortable talking, so I want to share the history of malls that I don't think got a fair treatment. Don't worry, my channel will not all be repeats. I do have a handful of new malls in my backlog. I hope you have a good day. Take care.